to uh, I'm John. And we're All About, All tools. about tools. Great to have you again with us this week. John, I know you've been out here working on this top and it's looking pretty good. Yes, it is. Haven't been working much though. <laughs> but you're working. <laughs> but as you can see, we seamed in this corner piece from mm -hmm. last week. And we went ahead and seamed this using the easy seam. And we've actually shown these on another episode, so we didn't want to go into doing that all over again. Uh, something new tonight is we are using uh, this new surface leveler. Let me unplug it here. Ken's taught me a lot about safety. And I'll put my glasses on. Oh, right, now I can actually see. Um, this is a uh, new router by Bosch called the Colt. It's a one horsepower router. Uh, it's variable speed and it's, a, it's really a, a nice little workhorse. We've got it set up as a surface leveler for our uh, radius kit, uh, but it can be used on doing seams as well. It's got uh, an adjuster here in 1 16th increments. And then it's really kind of neat. You just rotate the base and it locks in and you've got a micro adjuster right here, which is pretty cool. And to change the blade, you simply push in on this red button and that locks the arbor and you just go ahead and use a, uh, a wrench to take it off. We're also working on a new model of this that's going to have a larger diameter blade and kind of a an odd shaped offset base and what it's going to allow you to do is come on to a seam sideways or an inlay or something um, the the router bits with skis on the base are really nice but they're limited uh, for doing inlays and stuff they're a little bit difficult so that's kind of cool there so i guess we're ready to um sand the seam and i have something i'm kind of excited to show you um, I know you've been excited all day. I have been. <laughs> you know what that is? Yeah, that's our Yoast paper. And I know you've you've, you've loved the Yoast paper. And we've actually, in all honesty, we have sold a lot of Yoast paper we have. over the years. Absolutely. It is a fantastic paper. It actually pioneered an art in sanding that didn't really <laughs> exist before, and that was extremely efficient removal of debris and dust and media. Um, from the surface while sanding. And it, and it did it really by the presence of the perforations throughout the pad, instead of just having holes on a perimeter, which had to allow for the dust to migrate across the whole surface, finally get to a hole and then disappear. Right. So it kept your paper from having uniform contact to the surface. Well, any good idea never goes ignored. That's right. And we actually have a, a, a rather fascinating product right here. That's cool. Uh, it's by DuPont. Uh, DuPont, listen to me. No. <laughs> it's not by DuPont. No, it's by 3M. That was a slip. I don't That's know why right. I said that. But it's by uh, 3M Corporation, uh, who is really one of the world's leading manufacturers of, of sanding and finishing products. Uh, we can't, believe it or not, we have actually nothing to do better with our time than to cut out the holes. But we determined that there's close to twice as many holes on that paper. On this one. Exactly. And in tests that we have run, um, when we have tested both papers, we found that the dust removal was as efficient, if in some ways perhaps maybe not a little bit better with right. the 3M product. Uh, so it, it's not something that's widely available yet, although we certainly can get our hands on it. Um, but a fantastic paper, something you really have to look at. Remember, if you've never seen it, you saw it here first. That's right. <laughs> One of the fascinating things about this paper is it, the uh, dust collection hole is, pattern is very aggressive because since a disc spins this way, 
you can see the arc of the of the uh, hole pattern is into the spin. So it's kind of scooping it the whole time it's doing it, just like that. Exactly. Which exactly. is cool. Yeah, so it really, that aids in more efficient collection of the dust instead of throwing it out, it's actually kind of pulling it in, which was, uh, once again, another thing that's absolutely fascinating me about the paper, but something that really makes this paper unique, besides the fact that it, it has a, a very aggressive hole collection pattern, is it's also available as a film paper. So it can be used wet dry. Wet or dry. Okay. And that's something that's that certainly isn't available for the Yost at all. So if, and, and once again, I realize that dust collection isn't critical if you're wet sanding. Right. However, uh, one of the nice benefits to, the, to this whole pattern being here is you can either dry or wet sand. And if you wet sand, the perforations prevent the disc from generating any sort of a suction or a vacuum. Now, <clears throat> this is a silicon carbide paper, or this is aluminum, That's an aluminum oxide. oxide, and this is silicon carbide. Negative. This is a extremely refined aluminum oxide. <laughs> aluminum oxides are available anywhere from a very. I don't think so. From a very. I don't think so. But that's okay. You go right ahead. Aluminum oxides are available <laughs> from a very uh, unrefined brownish crystal all the way up to an extremely refined white powdery type crystal. And that's actually what goes on to this paper itself. Okay. Is and you're sure? I'm sure. It's an extremely okay. refined aluminum oxide. That lunch at Taco Bell tomorrow? Oh, man, let's get crazy. Let's talk about it. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm not going to say anymore because you may be right. But I, so, thought it was, I thought it was different than this paper altogether. I used to think so, too. And okay. uh, I was actually, when I uh, queried uh, 3M about it a little Query bit more, them? queried them. Okay. When I queried them a bit more about it because I wanted to be very precise <laughs> because my understanding was that this was a ceramic paper. Actually, no, it is not. It's an extremely refined aluminum oxide. Okay. Um, but uh, anyway, needless to say, uh, the benefit to this is it's a film as opposed as opposed to a, uh, uh, this is, happens to be a C-weight paper. I know we're going to be offering it as an A-weight, uh, right. which would be fine for uh, a for sanding, sanding machine. Right. Yep. Yep. And, uh, once again, Very inexpensive, too. Oh, for what it does, it's phenomenal. Yep. As a matter of fact, let me grab a sander real quick. Let's see you doing on the seam. See, there's something new all the time. We're still going to use our best tool sander. And we'll hook it up to the uh, dust collection so you can see how well it uh, picks up. And I'm going to use a 220 disc. Well, you got a 150 here. Oh, I do? Well, we'll use the 400. 150. You want to go 150? All right. We'll use the one that I thought it was a 220, but that was my, my error in grabbing the wrong one. Once again, I don't have to worry about lining up holes because I have holes throughout the whole, uh, the whole pad. Okay, and we'll go ahead, we'll, we'll set this on grind, and we'll start it up. Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, Automata. Well, we got to get it on, we got to turn the back on first. Okay, now we'll start it up. Cut it down well. Yeah. And you see this, uh, I don't see any dust generated. Nope. I don't see any blowing on you at all. And the joint appears to come out quite nice. You've done a great job now, on that. <laughs> this will work on the V4 as well. I, I would think without any trouble at all. Okay. Now, um, from what I understand, this is going to be coming out on the Micron papers as well in June or July, this whole pattern. Um, it is patented, and I think they'll be taking all their papers to it, which will really be nice because if you have several six-inch sanders, you might have a quarter cable, a festival, a box, whatever. Now you're only going to have to have one paper which is going to make a lot of difference. And that was one of the big advantages of the Yost paper as well. Correct. Now, we're using this with a 5-inch sander right now, which a lot of you are saying, well, that's a waste of time. And actually, it is. But this paper is not available in 6-inch yet. Uh, the uh, hole punches are actually being made uh, right now. 
so all we can do is show it to you in the 5S. Although I understand that the uh, stick can punch or dies and paper should be available sometime in May. Right. Okay. Now I missed a little here too, but we don't have to completely We're gonna cut that off. Anyway. We don't have to completely finish this. <clears throat> no, and it is as you can see, the uh, IA looks quite good really. Now that's all in grinder mode yet. Why don't you go ahead and just hit this real quick? Well, we're going to cut that off anyway, so that'd be unnecessary that's right. to sand okay. that. Okay, all right. But and as you can see, what does the paper look like at this point? Wow. You can actually see right where the uh, portholes are. Wow, that's really nice. Look at that. No load on it at all. The only reason why you have dust here is obviously this part of the paper is going to recede slightly. So it has all traveled across the back of the paper as well. Yep. You can see that it's the bowl port. You can see the kind of goldish part. Yep. And if I tap it from behind, you can see the dust coming right off of it. Wow. But there's virtually nothing on the face. No, that, 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 I mean, that holds up well. Great. That's great performance. Uh, as you can see, we took down our seam in only just really just a couple of minutes. Now, a six inch sander would have been much quicker. It would have been, but still, as you can see, the five inch performed without any problem yep. at all. And so that was great. Okay, let's go ahead. And I have to walk all the way around our bench. Let's drop that off. Uh, we can go ahead and line this out. All right, so now we're going to take our template and actually mark the countertop. We'll mark it back out because, <laughs> once again, we, we seen, since we've seen the section on, we'll take, we'll line it up by our pencil lines on the front edge. So we'll take, we'll get it right on our pencil line. Now, typically, I'd like to use a spring clamp to really hold this in position. How about if I get you one, Ken? Oh, that's great. How about if I get you a few of them? Perfect. <coughs> we'll go ahead and we'll put one right here. All right, but now, what are you doing here? Because we're overhanging in the back. Remember, we have our, um, we, uh, oh, have, we have our a scribe on the back of the, uh, on the back yeah, of the backsplash. Exactly. Exactly. All right, okay. All right, but now here we're way over. But if we cut back, remember this piece we see gone. So this is oversized right now. This whole section is oversized. Okay. All right. So we'll go ahead. We'll take uh, our pencil now. Okay. Oversized we'll just, is good. And we'll just make it. We'll mark it out quite simply like this. Like that. We'll mark our ends. And then go ahead if you want to go ahead and mark down the back. Excellent. Good. Okay, now we can go ahead. Now we kept, we were careful to store our template flat at all times, right? Because if we had leaned it up against the wall or had put it in some way where it had cupped or malformed, this process would be much more difficult. Right. But we went in, we were careful to keep it flat. Our center line is still dead on for the bowl. Okay. So we know that everything, we should still get a perfect fit from this top. Okay, so we can go ahead. And take that right, right out. And now the next step would be typically what we do. If you want to grab the ruler right there, we'll go ahead and we'll connect all of our lines so we have good lines now to work from. Be... And this, the reason why we do this is this will. Instead of trying to mark it all off the, the plastic template, John, could you give me a clamp right on the end of that? Sure. Just so this won't slide on me. The reason why we're doing this is this our, our, our front edges on the clamp. All of our front edges on clamp that, please. Thank you. Um, we want these lines to be straight, so we're connecting. Instead of relying on our template itself, we're just connecting our dots. And we now, know all of our now, lines are, are Now, this straight. is the actual template. Correct. So when you lay down the straight edges, are you going to lay it on there and make it a 16th big to begin with? Exactly. And then we're going to cut it back because of the rabbit. Correct. Perfect. That makes okay. it easy. So we can go ahead. We can show people a router that we're going to use and how we have it set up. What router are we going to use? It's down there on the floor. Yes, sir. It's right here what we have. Is this is a Festool 1400 
Uh, great router. Uh, we have on it a 5 8 collar with a half inch compression spiral bit, which means it cuts up from the bottom and down from the top at the exact same time. The benefit for doing that is by cutting up from the bottom, we're not going to have any blowout or chipping on the bottom, right. nor will we have it on the top. And we don't want to run the risk, since we're doing a cutback that's so close to our finished size, of having to create any chipping that uh, is going to reduce um, exactly. our final dimension. So we have that, and John's got the uh, straight edge pretty well set up. Now what we noticed, <clears throat> what Ken and I noticed earlier when we were talking about this is none of these lines really line up perfectly. So Ken's going to explain how we're just going to pick a couple of points on the countertop. We're going to clamp to those points and then go from point to point and you basically kind of fudge it. Exactly. So the top looks good when it's installed. It would be nice if, in the world of construction, <coughs> excuse me, in the world of construction, if there were truly 90 degree walls, 45 degree walls, and 22 and a half. They don't exist. So, in the world of cabinets, often the cabinet installer doesn't really concern himself with it, but with the countertops, it becomes a little bit more Get critical. Straight edge. So, or, what or, we're or, going or. to do is we've already determined that this 45 is out. I'm going, um, put a four, I'm going to put a four foot around here, Ken, so I can clamp it down here. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to put this on our line, our long line Thank here you. in the front, which will maintain the proper overhang that we want. And as we come out of the corner, this actually begins to overlay our line by up to a quarter of an inch down on this end. But once this joins the line right there, we'll stop the router and then we'll make the connection or, or the intersecting point right at this radius. Okay. By doing that, and the reason why we're doing that, it's not like we brought our cut out this far and then are trying to correct it and then have a kink in the edge. So it's right there at the it's corner. It's right at the radius. So we'll let the okay. radius be our blending point, <laughs> right. which visually will make it not stand out. And that's really what we want. Well, actually, I can do that right here. Yeah, we can actually get a third one right in here, can't we? Uh, I guess we can. This back. Okay, you want, do you want to cut that, John, or do you want me to do it? No, you go ahead. You're on that side. All right. Okay, I'll watch. I don't mind. It should be good, and it should be a clean, easy cut. We'll check our router to make sure we have plenty of depth, and we do, and away we go. Now we could be using a little dust collection on that as well. Okay, we're about ready to go to break. So what we'll do is while we're at break, we'll go ahead and get the other side set up. We'll probably route it and then we'll make the intersecting cuts afterwards. And then we'll go ahead and get our radiuses cut. So we'll be right back. This is an 